I always felt self-help had gotten a little bit, a little bit too airy fairy, po- you know, every, just be positive, just follow your dream, you know, like everything was. I think it, there needed to be a correction. There needed to be a, a little bit more pessimism and cynicism in the self-help world. And so I, I very much saw my role as like, I want to bring that. Um, and I think I, I just underestimated how much of a demand for that there was. Being honest about our flawed nature. Our, our brains are not optimized. We didn't evolve for truth or happiness. We evolved for survival. And so a lot of the mechanisms in our psychology that help, helped us survive uh, make us unhappy and make us irrational or unobjective. And right. so that should be the starting point for any self-improvement. My argument in, in all my work is, is that dissatisfaction is, it's an innate part of our psychology. Like there's no, you're never, there's no amount of money or success or love that you're ever gonna achieve where you're like, cool, I, I'm done, I got it, you know? Everything, every experience that you produce in your life or that you achieve in your life, your mind will find flaws. There are, there will be unex, unexpected or unintended consequences of that success or that love or whatever. Um, and so basically the problems never go away. Problems are an inherent part of our existence. It's like a magic trick that our brain keeps doing on us and we never figure it out. It's like, well, if I just get that promotion, like everything's gonna be fine, right? Right. And your brain's like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Like keep working, keep working. Then you get the promotion and within like two days, you're like, okay, well, I need another promotion now, you know? And it just keeps going. Um, And so what I, since every form of success is gonna produce its own problems, the point that I make is that what we should actually shoot for is let's just find the problems that we enjoy having, you know? So, because that ends up actually being A, what feels meaningful in our life. Um, because we, we actually need problems. It, it's, the, it's the fact that I have problems in my life and I work on them and I improve upon them. That is actually what gives my life a sense of meaning. You know, if everything is just great and I'm just like kicking it, with pina coladas at the beach, you know, like that's not meaningful. That doesn't feel, it gets old. It feels very shallow and superficial. It doesn't matter what, where you are in life, like your mind will generate a certain amount of problems, like perceived problems in your existence. Yeah. And so the, the thing that makes, say, you know, getting upset, if the biggest problem in your life is that, you know, you don't get a discount at your favorite restaurant, like that's a bad problem. That's not a meaningful problem. It's not, there's no benefit to having that problem. It makes you, it makes you more, that's a problem that makes you more kind of stuck within yourself. So a good problem is a, is a problem that feels meaningful, that uh, helps yourself and helps others, connects you with other people. Um, and that actually like serves a higher purpose. So. The point I make in Subtle Art is like, the reason, like people with money have have money problems. People without money have money problems. It's just that you would rather have the money problems of having money than not having money, you know? So it's a better problem. That's why you wanna make money. It's because you'd rather have the problem of like, you know, what do I invest in than like, how am I gonna eat? Like that's, so, so it's, the problems don't go away. You just improve upon the problems. You just find better problems. You, you trade in your, your low level problems for higher level problems. If you ask that person, are you proud of being upset that you didn't get the discount at the restaurant? You know, they'd say no. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I was probably, it's kind of a silly thing to get upset about or whatever. Whereas if you ask somebody like, are you proud of raising your grandson? You know, everybody's gonna say yes. So it's like, that's, it's that hindsight Because emotions only exist in the present. You know, you don't, it's, when you look back into the past, the only thing that you recognize is the meaning. You know, so it's like, we all have past experiences that we look back on that we can see that we got very emotionally worked up about something that was not meaningful. And we tend to feel like that was really stupid. We shouldn't have gotten worked up about it. Whereas there are other things that it's like, yes, I got emotionally worked up, but it was a very meaningful experience. It was a very important problem 
and I'm glad I got upset about it. I'm glad I worked on it. I'm glad I struggled. I'm glad I wasn't happy, you know? And so that's what we want to go for. Because if, 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 if the state of our nature is that we are just always going to experience problems, then we need to, the question then becomes, how do we find meaningful problems? You know, for most of human history, it was all about more. You know, if, if you learned more than the next guy, you would have an advantage. If you were able to do more or have more opportunities, you know, you, that's what got you ahead. I think today that's reversed. I think today what gets you ahead is knowing how to focus on less. You know, knowing how to cut through the bullshit, knowing how to ignore, like, okay, those opinions aren't valid or aren't helpful. That's probably not true. These are the two things I should focus on. Like, it's very few people have that skill right now. And I feel like that is, that's the skill that's going to get you ahead right now. Because one of the things I've been talking about on my, my tour is I think there's a lot to be said that I think the human mind has a bandwidth limit. There's only a certain amount of information we can process. And once you exceed that bandwidth limit, our minds start taking shortcuts. And those shortcuts basically look like prejudice, stereotypes, bigotry, irrational beliefs, um, narcissism. And so if you're consuming too much stuff and it's, and it's not nutritious information, your brain's gonna start taking all these shortcuts and, and it's gonna make you worse off. Find the, the handful, you know, find the handful of people that truly matter and really cultivate those relationships. Find the handful of causes or issues that really matter and focus all your energy on them and find the, the few amounts of information sources or, or media that is really, really helpful and beneficial for both you and the world and then just cut out all the bullshit.